Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to How Tuesdays at Lori's Country Cottage. Today I'm going to show you how to hand stitch your binding. So hand stitching binding. I like to hand stitch my binding. I think you know if you've come to my classes or watch my videos, I'm okay with shortcuts, but I really like hand stitch binding. We have some instructors and employees at the store who only machine stitch their binding, and that's okay too. If you don't have the time to hand stitch or you really don't like hand stitching, then go ahead and machine stitch. It's just a personal preference. Don't let anybody tell you that machine stitching is wrong or hand stitching is wrong. Just do what you want to do. You only need a few supplies for hand stitching your binding. You'll need your wonder, wonder clips, of course, so I've got my quilt clipped with my wonder clips. They come in different sizes. I like the regular size for binding as opposed to the large ones or the small ones. You'll need needles. So when I'm um, stitching binding on my quilt, I have to do a lot of re-threading. So I like a needle that has a half decent eye because threading is somewhat of a challenge. So I just use either um, a patchwork needle, a regular patchwork needle, or we even have a big eye sharps. So just your average size needle, a three to nine, and you'll find what you like best. I don't use really fine quilting needles because I find they bend really easily when I'm doing binding. The other thing you're gonna need is a thimble. So everybody hand stitches in a different way. When I hand stitch, I, point, I push with the side of my third finger, so not the end. So metal thimbles have um, are indented on the end and they're more made for um, hand stitching, hand quilting where you're pushing the needle from the end of your finger so they don't work well for me for binding. Same thing with the silicone with the metal tip, not really a great choice unless you stitch that way but binding I think is more of a, a sideways motion as opposed to a rocking front and back motion like hand quilting. So I prefer either the leather dots, um, so that's just a leather dot and you put it exactly where you want it on your finger and it stays, or the leather thimble. And actually this is my um, original leather thimble. It's very worn. If you find that your leather thimble stretches out over time, all you have to do is wet it and let it dry and it'll shrink up. So let me move on now to actually stitching the quilt and show you how it's done. Let me th show you how thread magic works. My dad made me this great spool holder and I use it for hand stitching. All you need to do is take your thread tail and lay it across the thread magic so that it lines up with the grooves. Then pop the lid on. Now all you have to do is draw your thread through the thread magic. Don't take too much thread, it'll end up knotting. Use about a shoulder width of thread when you're stitching. Let me show you how to tie a couple knots. I know everyone knows how to tie knots, but I learned something new from Deborah. Deborah ties knots differently than I do. Here's how she does it. She lays her thread across her index finger and pinches it with her thumb. Then wrap your thread around your finger. I like to make a little X. Now roll those two threads off your finger Use your third finger to pinch the threads and slide. Your third finger right there has your knot. Whoop. I'm still learning. There we go. There's my knot. So that's Deborah's method of making a knot. Here's how I make a knot. I take my thread lay my tail on my needle and pinch it in between my fingers. Then I wrap it around 
three or four times. I could wrap it around more if I liked. And then I tug that knot in between the pinch point of my fingers. Now when I pull my needle, that knot is in between my fingers and I'm sliding it down my thread. And there we go. There's my knot. So now that I have my knot made, let me show you how to do some hand stitching. Okay, I'm ready to show you the hand stitching. I've got my threaded needle with my knot and I'm starting near a corner so that I can show you how to turn a corner. My needle goes in about two threads inside the edge of my fabric, just through my binding. All I'm trying to do is put my knot in the back. There we go, and you can tuck that tail. Now my knot is in the back. My needle goes down directly beside where my needle came up and I move underneath my backing fabric about three eighths of an inch and come up about two threads into my binding. And pull. And again, my needle goes in directly beside, right beside the binding where I came up. I move about three eighths of an inch come out about two threads into my binding and pull. So my stitches are a small bar tack here, the movement is under my backing, then a small bar tack here. Let me show you what that looks like. Here we go. So in right beside where I came up, and about two threads inside. I have a little kink in my thread, there we go. And I'm just gonna stitch this up to the corner and then show you how to stitch a corner in to create that little bar tack and up right in the edge of the binding. When I'm stitching a big quilt, about every 10 to 12 inches, whenever I think of it, I stop and I throw in a quick single knot. Just in case someone's little toe gets stuck in the binding and it becomes unstitched. So I'm getting close to the corner and it's always tough to stitch these corners because you've got nothing to hold on to. All right, there we go. I'm going to take my binding clip out now. When you come to your corners, if this side is on top of your mitered corner, this side goes underneath the mitered corner. It reduces bulk. So I'm going to give that a little tug so it's nice and tight. Go in beside where my needle came out and I'm going to come out through both layers and pull up. Now I'm going to create my bar tack across here. I'm going to move underneath and come up on my top piece. And I'll do one more stitch like that. And that's just going to hold that corner nice and flat. And now I'll come down, I'm just going to shift my quilt, and I don't worry about stitching all the way down. I'm going to take that stitch all the way to the corner and come out right on that corner. 
Now I'll just continue stitching. Corners are the hardest to stitch because you have nothing to hold on to. So I end up taking smaller stitches on my corners than for the rest of the quilt. As soon as you have something to hold on to, it's just easier to stitch. Now you'll notice when I'm stitching, I fold it over my fingers. It holds it nice and tight. I can see really well, but I could also feel if I accidentally stuck my needle all the way to the front of my quilt, I would feel that thread against my finger and that has happened occasionally. All you have to do is stop and pull out that stitch. So there's my hand stitching. So remember, it's a bar tack. This goes straight across and the movement is underneath the backing. So let me show you how to tie off. There are several ways you can tie off. I have a friend who simply takes three tiny stitches at exactly the same spot. Then she takes this thread, buries it underneath, so she'll come out maybe up here and cut it off. And so she doesn't actually tie a knot. I actually tie a knot. So I'm just gonna take a stitch here or two so I can show you how I tie a knot to tie it off. So there I'm at the end. I am going to take a tiny little stitch. I wanna make sure I catch my backing and just the edge of my front. When I see this little circle, I stick my needle through it twice and I'm creating a knot. I give it a pull and my knot is, I guess, on top, but you certainly can't see it. There's my hand stitched binding. So I'm well on my way to getting my hand stitching done. I wanted to talk a bit about thread and hand stitching binding. You'll notice that I matched my thread to my binding as opposed to my backing fabric. I did that because the only place your thread is really ever visible or on top is on the binding. When we do that bar tack across, we're coming up two threads inside the edge of our binding and then crossing over our binding and going underneath the backing. So you should match your thread to your binding fabric. Sometimes if you have a multicolored fabric, it's not a big deal. You can't really control that. My binding's all blue, so I found a thread that was the closest match that I had at home. If you can't find exactly the right color of thread to match your binding, if you have one that's a little bit lighter or one that's a little bit darker, if you have to choose, choose the one that's a little bit darker. It'll look like a shadow as opposed to having a light thread on a dark fabric. I hope you enjoyed my How Tuesday on how to hand stitch your binding. Thanks for joining me.